Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. We're channeling a little of the 1950s today because we've got a really cute and kitschy bit of decor for the kitchen today. This is a soap bottle apron and we designed one to have sort of a 1950s vintage flair to it. These things are so cute. They're a fun way to just sort of kind of hide the soap bottle since it usually sits out next to the kitchen sink and it adds a little bit of quirkiness to your entire kitchen. Plus you can make them any color you want to match your decor or maybe the decor of somebody who also might like one of these. We're using cotton. Cotton is a good choice for use in the kitchen because it washes easily and it's heat resistant. And we've added a little tiny pocket heart detail to our apron. Really gives it that, that sort of vintage kitschy feel. This little heart is a tutorial we previously did and we'll make sure there's a link to that in the description box down below. So if you want to add a little heart pocket to your apron, we can show you how to do that too. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll flounce on over to the craft table like the perfect hostess we are, and we'll stitch one up together. In order to make our little dish soap apron, you're going to want around 20 yards of a cotton size 4 medium weight yarn per color. So I feel that these look best in two different colors, white being the primary color and then any other color you like as the secondary color. So about 20 yards of each. Um, if you want to add a little heart shaped pocket, then we also have a heart applique tutorial. We'll put a link to that in the description box down below and you can make one of those up in the contrasting color. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using today is a 4.5 millimeter, also known as a 7 in the US and the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with the bib section of the apron, so you want to grab your contrasting color, so not the white, the other color. And we're going to begin with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to chain nine. So nine chains to begin. We're going to skip over the first chain, find the second one, and single crochet into it. And you're going to single crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning. You'll have eight stitches at the end of row one. At the end of row one, you'll have eight stitches. You're going to chain one and turn. And you're going to single crochet into each stitch, so always skip your turning chain single crochet into each stitch all the way across. You'll still have eight stitches. You'll chain one and turn at the end of this row and you're going to repeat this little single crochet in each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn, until you have a total of eight rows. Once you have eight rows, and you can count them up, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we want to create the little neck strap that goes around the top of the bottle or the little spigot part. So I've made a chain of 12 on this one and it's a pretty snug fit. And I made a chain of 20 on this one and I think that's too loose. So I'm going to suggest that you chain anywhere between 12 and 14 chains. And if you've got a soap bottle handy, you can always double check it, but anywhere between 12 and 14 chains should be enough. And then you're going to just slip stitch into the edge or the last stitch. So skip that entire row and just slip stitch into the last stitch. And that's the little neck part. 
Um, so that's sort of the next strap. It sits around the top of the soap bottle. Now, if you want to do this frill in white, I'm going to do a change to white now because Mr. and Stitches suggested I make one in white. I really like that. This was the first one I made with the same colored little frill. They're both cute, but I like the way the white one looks a little better. So I'm going to switch to white here. But if you wanted to make yours the same color, so that's a ruffled one using all the same color, then don't fasten off with your, your contrast color. Just chain two right from where you are. But if you are going to switch to white to do the little ruffle, then we're going to fasten off. So you don't need too much yarn. Just snip it. Fasten off and take a moment to weave that tail in back and forth across some of those stitches. We're going to work our frill now, so if you're changing colors like I am, you're going to begin with a slip knot on your hook. If you aren't changing colors, you've already chained two out from here. The rest of us are going to join our yarn in the same, sort of the same stitch that we attached our neck strap to, so that very end stitch there. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch, nice and tight. And now we're going to chain two, so everybody should now be at the same place. So if you didn't change color, you just chained two. For the rest of us, we've joined and chained two. We're going to turn our work now. I'm going to work over top of my little short tail. And you're going to identify the edge of each of your rows. There should be eight of them, and you're in the edge of the first row right up here. You're going to work three half double crochets into the same place that you joined your yarn. So three half double crochets all into that same place. Okay. And now we find, so that's the edge of row one. We're going to find the edge of row two. Here it is here. And we're going to work four half double crochet into the edge of that row. So four half double crochet into the edge of each of those two rows. And you're going to do that all the way down. So just always pause. You know you've done two. You have six more to go. Find the next edge of the row. And you can just work all the way around the edge of the row. So if you find a little space there, because you're working so many stitches into the same place, go right ahead and work right around the edge stitch. So four half double crochet worked into the edge of each of those rows and that is going to create a nice big ruffling effect down the edge of our apron. You should have four half double crochet all worked into the edge of each row. So four half double crochet per row end and it'll be wanting to wave and ripple and stretch a little bit and that's perfectly fine. We'll get back to that. We're going to work our way now across the bottom which is the foundation chain row of our little bib and you want to make sure you don't miss that first stitch because we've crammed a lot of stitches in here so right into that first foundation chain you're just going to single crochet and you're going to single crochet underneath each of those foundation chains, or you can look at it the other way, of crocheting into the bottom of each of those first eight stitches of row one, all the way across. So eight single crochet all the way across that bottom. So that's eight single crochet worked across the bottom of that foundation chain row. And now we're gonna work the ruffle up the other side. So we're gonna chain two, and you can make sure that you, you put them in the same places. So there's the first one, which means that's the, the edge of, that's the last one you're going to work. So count down. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's the edge of row eight. So even though you're coming off here with a chain two, you actually want to work your three half double crochet into the edge of that row, which is a little bit further down. So. Try not to miss it. I'm still working over top of my little short tail here. So three half double crochet into the edge of that first row, which sits up a little bit. And don't worry too much about your chain two. It's going to disappear a little later on. And now you're just going to do the same thing up the other side. So work four half double crochet. So it's back to four. Four half double crochet into the edge of each of these rows you'll have eight little sets of four half double crochet all the way up the other side of your bib. 
when you get up to the top of the last row, work three half double crochet and then chain two and we're just going to slip stitch into that same place. So your last counting half double crochet is actually a chain two and that's just so that it kind of mirrors what's going on on the other side. That's it for the ruffle. You can snip your yarn. You don't need very much. Fasten off. Grab your yarn needle and you can weave that tail in back and forth across some of those white ruffles. So take care of that and then we'll actually make it look roughly. Now we've got our ruffles on either side of our bib and this is something you can do again when you're finished but all you need to do to make that nice little roughly look happen is to start up at the top or the bottom, sort of push in a little bit of a ruffle, give it a pinch and then find sort of the next natural little ruffle of yarn and fold that in a bit, give it a pinch and then just kind of work your way down. You'll probably have about four of these little natural sort of inclined bits of ruffle and then just give it a pinch and that will make that little ruffle happen across the edge of your bib and it will also stop that sort of little bit of spread that appears to want to happen um, down the side of your bib. Now like I said you might want to do this again when you're done but just so you can get an idea of how that little ruffle is going to look all the way up and down your apron. That looks so cute. Okay, let's put the skirt on now. We're all going to take our little bibs and flip it upside down and we're going to be joining our yarn in the first single crochet. So we're all going to start with a slip knot on our hook. We are making the white section of the um, the apron, the little skirt. So you want to have your white yarn, slip knot on your hook, find that first single crochet you made at the edge of that row and just slip your hook in there. You're going to join with a slip stitch and I like to sort of tug my tails to the inside. That kind of makes it a nice neat join and I'm going to work over top of my tail. We're going to chain two. The chain two at the beginning of each row is now going to count as a double crochet. We're going to double crochet into the same stitch that we joined in. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch that leaves us eight I uh, should say six single crochets across so there's the chain two just ignore that you should have six single crochets left you're going to work a little repeater pattern of two double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet worked into the stitch after that. So two, one, two, one, all the way across. You're going to have 12 double crochet at the end of this first row of the skirt. That's 12 double crochet. The chain two counts as a double crochet. So 12 across for the first row of the skirt. We're going to chain two. Chain two counts as a double crochet. We're going to turn our work into that same stitch that the chain two came out of. So this one right here, we're going to double crochet. And now the little repeating pattern we're going to work is two double crochet into the first stitch. Remember your chain two counts and double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one. And we're going to work that all the way across. So chain two counts. That's two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet, double crochet. We repeat two double crochet into the next stitch and then double crochet into each of the next two stitches and you'll have 16 stitches in total at the end of row two. When you get across to the end your last stitch is going to be worked into the top of the chain two because remember the chain two counts as a double crochet so find the top of that chain two and just get your hook into the top of it any way you can and that's where the last double crochet of each of these rows will be worked. So your last stitch will always be worked into the top of the chain two. That's 16 stitches across for the second row of our skirt. We're going to chain two. Chain two counts as a double crochet. Turn our work. Double crochet into the same stitch. So same stitch as the chain two. That counts as our first two double crochet of the set. We're going to double crochet into each of the next three stitches now. So two, one, one, one. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. 
So two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and we'll be up to 20 double crochet by the end of this row. At the end of row three of your little skirt, you'll have 20 stitches. Don't forget that last double crochet is worked into the top of the chain two, so don't miss it. We're going to chain two. Chain two counts as a double crochet. Turn our work. Double crochet into the same stitch that the chain two came out of. That counts as our first two double crochet. And now we're going to double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So now the repeater pattern is two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, double crochet into each of the next four stitches, and at the end of this row we'll be up to 24 stitches. That's four rows in our skirt. The last row has 24 stitches in it. It's all double crochet. Don't forget that last stitch gets worked into the top of the chain two. We've got one more row to work with the white in our skirt. We're going to chain two and turn. Chain two counts as a double crochet. We are not increasing now. So we're not going to use this stitch because the chain two counts as a double crochet and it's already accounted for. We're just going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So you'll still have 24 stitches at the end of this row. No increasing, no decreasing. We're just giving the skirt a little added length. That's 24 stitches at the end of row 5. So we haven't increased. You should have the same stitch count for both of those last two rows. That's it for the white section of the skirt. You can trim your yarn. Fasten off and take a moment to weave that tail in back across some of those stitches in the last row. We're switching back to our contrasting color now and we're going to work this little border around the edge of the skirt. So get your contrasting color back. And we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And you're going to decide which side you like to be the front. I like it when I can sort of see the tops of my stitches there. You're going to start with your hook. So in the bottom of that stitch, so that right where your contrasting color and your white meets, you're going to stick your hook right in there. And you're going to join with a slip stitch right over top of that chain too. So that's going to make it nice and sort of snug. Pull that tight knot. You can tug your tail down. I'm going to work over top of mine. And that's just going to sort of cozy up that little edge of the frill so it doesn't sort of hang low. And now we're going to work a single crochet, two in fact, into the edge of each of those five rows. So you should have five, or I should say ten single crochets worked all the way down the side. Now you want to sort of try and grab the sides of stitches so don't work around a stitch. You want to Make nice, even little single crochets, two per edge of row. Try to kind of get pieces of the stitch, and when you get to sort of a chain two, you can just work right through the chains. And take your time. This doesn't have to be a rush. You just want to get a nice, even set of 10 single crochet running down the edge of your little skirt. It's going to make a nice little border. So go ahead, two single crochet in the edge of each of those five rows. You'll have 10 single crochet before we get down to the bottom. You should have 10 single crochet worked as evenly as possible down the edge of that first side of your skirt. When you get to the bottom, you're going to have all of these lovely little simple stitches to work into across there. We're going to begin by, so there's, find the top of either the chain two or the first double crochet, whatever is the actual stitch down there. And it might look a little funny if you worked into the side of it. And if you end up with one more or one less worked across the bottom here, don't worry too much about it. We're going to chain two. This chain two counts as a double crochet, and we're going to double crochet immediately into the same place. So if it's the top of a stitch, great. If it's the top of a chain two, that's fine too. And that counts as two double crochet. 
We're going to double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So we're going to do just a gentle little increasing pattern here. So two double crochet to start, double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then you start all over again. Two double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Go ahead and repeat that little pattern all the way across the bottom and I'll catch up with you. Once you've worked that little pattern all the way across, you'll be coming up to your 30th stitch. There will be 30 stitches, or double crochet in particular, in this row. And the last stitch would naturally be worked into the top of the chain two, or the last stitch, whatever's sitting there. But instead of working a double crochet, we're going to chain two. So this chain two will count as a double crochet. And we are going to actually single crochet into the top of that stitch. So whether it's, or I should say the side of that stitch. So if it's the chain two, you grab a piece of the side of it. If it's a double crochet, try to grab a piece of the side of it because we're going to actually start working our little single crochet stitches all the way up the other side. And remember there's still five rows of white so you want to have ten evenly placed single crochet running up the edge of it. So two single crochet per edge of row. Just take your time. You should have ten just like the other side and I'll catch up with you up at the top. Once you've worked 10 single crochet up the other side of your apron, you're going to reach up to the top. So you see that last little stitch there where your last single crochet worked across the bottom of your bib is. You're going to reach up, poke your, ho your hook through there, and you're going to slip stitch into that space. And that's also just going to neatly close off our little ruffle so it looks tidy on both sides. So that is it for the border of our little apron. But of course now we want to work our ties and they're the same color as our contrasting color so we're not fastening off. Right from here, so you've slip stitched that finishes your border, you're going to chain 31. So chain 31 to begin our first apron tie. 31 chains off the side of the skirt. We're going to slip stitch our way back now. So you're going to skip over the first chain from the hook, find the next one and slip stitch into it. And try to make your slip stitches as even as possible. So not too loose, not too tight. Just work away at them. You'll have 30 slip stitches by the time you get back to the apron. But if you're one off or one over, that's fine. Once you've slip stitched into each chain all the way back, if your tie looks a little gnarly, just hold on to your apron nice and tight, grab the end, and pull it out. Run your fingers across it, pull it out nice and tight, and that will even out your stitches and give you a nice tidy tie. And now we're going to make a belt. So we're going to slip stitch across the division row between your two colors and you can see those holes pretty clearly. I'll just poke my hook in from behind so you can see it. So there's hole number one, hole number two, hole number three. So right where your color divides. We're going to work surface chains or slip stitches. It's really simple. Hook goes through the first space your yarn is always out the back, your hook is always out the front. Just try to make them about the same evenness as your slip stitches. Next space, or the next hole between those two colors. Yarn stays out the back, hook comes back out the front, and chain. Next, yarn's out the back, hook pops back out the front, and chain. I absolutely love surface slip stitches. They are such a neat way to add embroidery or a little extra detail to projects. Really helps to finish them off. And you're just going to basically work eight because there's eight stitches across that row. So you're just going to surface chain right across. Oh, gives it just the nicest little belt detail. And then you're going to work the same chain idea out the other side for tie number two. So you're going to chain 31, skip 
the, the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second chain and slip stitch all the way back. So 31 chains to begin. Slip stitch all the way back. You'll have 30 slip stitches in total and I'll catch up with you back at the apron. Same thing, once you've chained all the way back, you can grab your tie, pull it out, and that will help straighten it and make it a little more neat and tidy looking. Just to finish, you're going to slip stitch back through that last space anywhere along the edge into the same color is fine. Trim your yarn. And fasten off. Pull that nice and tight. Flip it over and you can weave that colored tail in underneath some of those same colored stitches across the back of the bib section there. Back and forth a couple times just so it won't come out. And then we're going to add our little pocket. We have the option here of adding a cute little heart shaped pocket to the corner of our apron. I feel like that just finishes off that vintage 50s vibe just so cute and perfectly so like i said we've got a link to this tutorial in the description box down below it's a simple little heart applique just make sure when you've made it you've left a little bit of tail and we're not going to sew all the way around so we're going to actually treat it just like a pocket you're going to pick a place on your apron that you want to sew it down to and you can pin it down if you feel that's necessary but we're going to actually just start sewing all the way over here on the side and we're going to use that little trick I like where you just pick up the top facing loop of one of the stitches that you're sewing it to and of course go through the whole stitch along the side of your little applique. I'm just going to hold my down. I'm going to check it every so often to make sure that it hasn't moved on me. Pick up the next closest top facing loop and the next sort of edge stitch. And of course, when you do that, you don't have anything showing through to the back, which is really nice. And you're just going to basically work your way around to about the same stitch on the opposite side. So you're going to leave the top open just like you would if you were putting on an actual pocket. To get around to the other side remember we're just going to leave that top part open so that it actually functions a bit like a pocket not that it's really big enough to put anything in there but we're going to just make a small knot here at the side pull this nice and tight and then we're going to just bring our yarn underneath and through the center of our little applique. So you can pull in that little knot so it disappears and then you can just weave that tail back and forth through some of those center stitches and if you've got anything left over and you just might because this is a pretty small area you can just trim any excess on that little sewing tail. When you're done, you can smooth out the skirt, sort of pull out those corners. It'll lie flat and of course once you put it on your soap bottle it'll kind of curve around the edges a little. And remember you can just sort of re-ruffle your ruffled edges if they've come unruffled while you were finishing off your little apron. And there you go! <laughs> a cute little kitchen apron for your kitchen dish soap. Super cute, doesn't use up a whole lot of yarn. It's actually a pretty good scrap project if you've got some cotton lying around. And it also makes a really cute gift because who doesn't want a little bit of quirkiness for their kitchen? We hope you enjoyed making that along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty and have an awesome week. Bye everybody. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.